Hey everyone, it's me, Wendy, back for another perfume review here on Wendy's Parade. I actually take that back. It's not a, it's not a review. It's going to be a tag. Um, a lovely woman named Tara Michelle, her channel is called Opinionated Sense. And she, and this has been done before, you know, what would you do if you had to only wear four perfumes per year, one per season, right? It's a very good thought exercise. And I like watching tag videos, but this one really got me thinking. Like I was actually considering like, what the hell would I do? What would I pick? What the hell would I do if I only had four perfumes to wear for the whole year? And I was really thinking about it and the thought was, it wasn't upsetting me. I mean, it's just perfume, but I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to wear one perfume per season. I don't even want to wear one perfume per week. Sometimes I don't even wear one perfume per day. I mean, occasionally I will have a dedicated scent of the day, but you know, I put some perfume on before I take my shower and then I shower and then it's worn off at the end of the day and maybe I'll respray or maybe I'll change it for bedtime perfume. You know, I don't know, but man, like I have on it hard to stay faithful to a perfume for 24 hours. You know, the most I'll do if I'm really into a scent, I may wear it for two days, you know, two days in a row or over the course of a couple of weeks, I may be wearing it like two or three times a week. Um, before it gets stepped aside just for a little bit but I that would be really I wouldn't want to do that I don't even know if I could only I mean I couldn't but for the purposes of this thought exercise this is what I've come up with and it's funny because I have so many perfumes that I love and so many favorites and I'm leaving out some of my most 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 favorite like my top fives but what I decided was a lot of these that I'm that I've picked the big thing for them is that they have to be versatile, right? If you're going to wear a perfume every single day for three or four months, it has to be something that is appropriate to go to work, to go out, to go to, you know, whatever. It has to be appropriate everywhere. And there are perfumes that I love that they get to be a little too much. Like maybe I only want to wear, I love the perfume uh, Coco Chanel. I love Coco, but it's a little much. And I don't want to wear that every single day because I wear it for one day, I enjoy it. And then I don't wear it for a while because it's just a lot. You know, the other thing is you don't want them to be too boring. You don't want like a scent that's so boring that you forget you have it on or it's so linear that it, I mean, you, and sometimes you want to just smell, I don't even mean to say boring, but it's a big difference when you're wearing a boring perfume because you need one for a few hours or because you want to smell like orange blossom or because you're getting on an airplane versus the day in and day out repetitive. You don't want your perfume to get boring, right? You don't want to be bored by it. So it has to be versatile. It has to be socially acceptable. It has to be not too much where you're going to get irritated and you and it can't be too little where you're going to get bored by it. So this was tough. Um, now, all of these are my favorites, but God, I just can't believe how much I have to leave out. But okay, so let's get into it. That's just my, that's just... Because it's like a terrifying thought exercise. Like, oh my God, what if I would have to do that? I mean, oh, what's your desert island perfume? Or what perfume you could would you wear if you only had one or, you know, whatever. But it's still just like, man, that, I don't, I don't want to do that. I just don't. It would be like listening to the same song. What if you could only have one song you listen to for a season? Or what's the one food you would eat for four months in a row? Like, that'd be horrible. Regardless, we're going to start in the beginning of the year. The beginning of the year is January. I live in the Northern Hemisphere, so that is winter. So my winter perfume would be, and this is also exciting because this perfume, it's almost done. Rest assured, I have a backup. Uh, this is Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black. Uh, I love, I love Nirvana Black. Um, I think I've said before, I love the note sandalwood. I'm really into sandalwood perfumes. I'm really into dark perfumes. Um, this is sandalwood. It's musky. It has, it has like a raisiny, like toasted, like stewed fruit violet on the top. Um, it's a little bit androgynous. It's a little bit sweet. It's a little bit dark. I really feel like um, Nirvana Black is appropriate for everything. I've never had a complaint. It wears perfectly. It's not too much. It's not too little. I know I have it on all day. It's not so linear that it bores me. It's not so complicated that I psychologically get need to get away from it after a while. So this is something that I've worn an awful lot. Um, I mean, the bottle's almost gone. And if you have a lot of perfume, you know what I'm talking about. Finishing a bottle is like momentous. And I'm, I've had this, I've had this bottle for at least five years and it's almost gone. Um, so it's something that I wear a lot, not something that I would ever wear for four months in a row. But if I had to pick a wintertime perfume, it would be this one. It's dark enough. Um, and it's, I don't know, it wears, I wear this in the summertime too, but I prefer to wear this in the winter a little bit more. 
it's dark enough, it's easy enough, um, it's appropriate enough, so this would be my winter prime perfume, would be Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black. So moving on to spring, another favorite. Uh, this is Prada and Fusion Deris. This is the original 2007 version, not the reformulated one from 2015. Um, I backed this up. When I saw that they reformulated it, I just went, I went bananas and I have enough. If I was actually to wear this for like 20 years, every single day, I probably have enough. Like, um, I, I had a bottle of the reformulation and just didn't cut it. But regardless, um, this is a classic, I think, Prada Infusion Deris. It is an iris perfume. It also is powdery. It's um, musky. It's incensey. It's slightly green. This is another one where um, I've gotten tons and tons and tons of compliments on this, probably because I wear this a lot. Um, so just mathematically, if, <laughs> if I'm going to get a compliment, I may be wearing this because I wear this an awful lot. I've gone through, this is probably my fifth bottle. Um, this is another one. It fits that criteria. I can wear it anywhere, any time of day, any event, any mood I'm in, anything. I don't, I wear this all year round, so I can't even say it wears better any single time, but I think just because of the, the cool toned green nature of it, it reminds me of spring. Where I live, spring can be pretty cold. Uh, global warming's trending to change that a little bit, but where I live, spring, April and May, you may have snow, snow, um, you know, you're going to have cold days, it's going to be rainy. And this, this perfume is beautiful, and it's also even a little moody. Uh, spring can be, you know, those dark spring days, someplace, if, depending on where you live. So... So this is my spring pick, which is Prada Infusion Deris. And I actually think out of all the ones I'm going to pick, this is something I could stand to wear every day for four months. I wouldn't be happy about it, but this is probably the one where I could just put it on every day and never get sick of it and never, I mean, it, it, would, it would be hard, but I could do it. Okay, so moving on to summer, I just did a review for this perfume recently because um, I live somewhere where it gets pretty warm in the summer. This is Lancôme Eau de Jure. This is really great for those super hot days. It's not too much. It's not too little. It smells really clean. It is so refreshing to put on after you take a nice cool shower and you just want to cool off and relax. Um, it wears beautifully in the heat. It just projects in the heat. This is something that I never wear in the winter and are on a cold day. So that's why I picked this. Uh, it's a, just a beautiful uh, woody flora musk, Lancôme Eau de Jure, and it's it's discontinued, so it's probably going to get expensive one day, but right now you can still buy a bottle of this for like 35, 40 bucks. So Lancôme Eau de Jure for summertime. So after summer, we have fall. And in the fall, I picked my most favorite perfume of all time. It's my signature scent. It's the perfume that I cannot live without. Um, and that is a Guerlain perfume. It's Guerlain Samsara. And the beautiful red bottle, this is not the original bottle, the original bottles, which I also have, they are clear. This is the 90s bottles. This this perfume came out in 1989. This is the original bottle. They had these for about 10 years, and then they switched to what I think is the heart and soul of Samsara. I mean, look, it's red, it's opulent, it just fits. It fits, it fits what Samsara is, if for any of you have ever smelled this perfume. Um, this is my favorite perfume of all time, and man, I could wear this in the fall. It definitely, I wear this in the summertime too and we're on warm weather, but I wear it a little bit more in the cooler weather. I could easily also make this my wintertime perfume, but I picked a Nirvana Black instead. But um, in the fall, in the cooler weather, this just wears beautifully. This is a sandalwood scent that also has jasmine, rose, carnation, green notes, uh, musk, peach, uh, bergamot, uh, just tarragon. There's like all these, all these notes. It, this is a very, very complicated, complex perfume. I love it. I will never be without it. Um, and I'm going to cheat. I have a bottle of the Eau de Parfum. This is real cheating, by the way. This is a uh, post Y2K Eau de Parfum. Uh, this is a 90s Eau de Parfum. And I'm almost out of this, as you can see. So I have a backup. This is just a tester, uh, 90s Eau de Toilette. I usually don't like buying perfumes without caps. It really bothers. Don't they look headless? Okay, look at this. Look at this. Then look at this. It's just wrong. Perfumes need a cap. I can't I can't do it. But be that as it may, this, this scent is discontinued in this form, you know, and if I, I saw these on eBay, um, not at the same time, but, you know, 
I probably paid like 35, 40 bucks. The juice is fine, the perfume is fine, so I just have to deal with them not having a cap, it's okay. I'm not wearing this around my chest, although I would, um, you know. But man, it doesn't look like its head was chopped off. It just, it's obscene. Caps, ugh, you need the cap, but regardless. So Samsara, I'm cheating a little bit. I would definitely wear the more modern in, um, incarnation. I'd also wear the 90s incarnation. What I don't have is the B bottle. That's the current one, and I had a bottle of that, and I quickly, I think I just gave it away because I was, I, was, I was stunned at the difference. It was so wrong, and I know a lot of people like the B bottle, but I've been wearing Samsara for a long time, and that's kind of like what happened with Prada Infusion de Riz. Um, I can handle the changes from this to this, but I could not handle the changes to the B bottle. The B bottle is just no. So Samsara, um, that's all I'm going to say about it. I could talk for probably four hours about Samsara, but Samsara from Guerlain would be my fall scent. And I still, yeah, I'm going to stop thinking about this saw that exercise because unless something horrible happens, I'm not going to only have to wear four perfumes a year, but that's something I would not want to do. I am not a perfume minimalist. I enjoy wearing lots of different kinds of scents. Um, sometimes I only wear a perfume once a year, but I have a good day for that. I have a reason for wanting to wear it that day. You know, you pick your perfume and there's a reason you want to wear it, whether it's your mood, what you're doing, what you're craving, the weather outside, the weather inside, psychologically inside of you. So I, I, ugh. The longest, the longest duration that I ever wear perfumes in a row is two days. Sometimes I will be like, this is amazing. I'm just going to wear this again. But by the third day, I need something else. Um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, but if forced, if forced to, if my choices were you don't ever get to wear perfume again or you have to do this seasonal bullshit, this is what I would pick. So those are my four. Uh, Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black for winter. Uh, Prada Infusion de Riz for spring. My beloved Eau de Jure for summer. And the lovely Samsara for fall. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on this. I don't know if any of you could... I don't know. Maybe some people like seasons. I do have, I do tend to pick things based on season just because they wear so differently depending on how hot, cold, humid, uh, dry, the eras, that sort of thing. So I definitely wear perfumes based on what season it is, but that's only because, and it's not even because of what's appropriate. It's because of what they smell like. Sometimes some things I don't want to smell in the summer and some things I don't smell in the winter and, you know, but... I don't know. Could you do it? Could you pair down to that? Maybe you already do that. Maybe you're a sane, rational person and you only have four, four, six, ten bottles on your shelf like, like a normal person should. You don't really even need more than ten, but oh well. We all have something. But anyway, this is actually kind of fun and uh, let me know what you think and thank you for listening and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Bye-bye.